welcome back pack. This is Adbil from Wolf Steel Buildings. Hey, we finally finished this 30 by 50 metal building. Now we're gonna be doing a full tour. I got some cool things to really show you from like a base trim lean-to that has no base rail. I know a lot of clients are asking about that and really talk about overhead doors. If you're looking at this building, it looks spectacular. And don't forget to subscribe uh, with our channel. Uh, we have a lot more cooler projects uh, just like this one coming up. So stay tuned. Now, before we get started, I just want to tell you guys a little bit of our client. So our client, uh, we're here in Midlothian, Texas. There's a new development here. And aesthetics is like really important here. Well, it's something that we love. We love to build things that look aesthetically very pleasing. So we were really, really excited about this project. And we also did his, uh, our client's son. So the son and father bought a uh, metal building. So subscribe to our channel because that building is also coming up. It has cedar posts. It's a lot of cool things. Now, what you're seeing here is a 30 wide by 50 long. Now the eaves up to where you see the gutters is uh, 16 foot tall. And the pitch is a 312 pitch, so it's rising to about three to four feet. So 312, 15, about 45 inches, could be almost about four feet, okay? So what we have is also black. This is a black a trim, and then it's got the pewter gray side. This is our gutter system we use for tubular buildings. Since it's very residential, we use very residential gutter system, similar to the homes and that way it matches and combines perfectly. But if you look, it looks fantastic. What we also have is all color matching screws. So that is something that we really focus on is aesthetics. A lot of your tubular uh, standards are built with just galvanized screws, like that's just standard. We automatically include color screws just because it's aesthetically a lot pleasing. <laughs> so now we do have uh, the vertical paneling, so the panels run up and down. It's an upgrade from, from a horizontal, which is standard. And I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of the inside where I show you guys what also comes with vertical. Why is it a little bit more? So I'm gonna be talking a little bit about that. But this is our residential overhead doors. These, we call them the uh, short panels. They're basically the little squares here are short. Um, you can get the long. We also have commercial doors, which can be the, the ribbed, and then there's a flush one. But this is our, our residential overhead doors. What I really, really love about them is that it seals. You do have this, the weather strip here around it, which really like seals this door, and they're very good for insulation or, or to insulate the building. Um, this is not an insulated overhead door. You can get insulated overhead doors, but this is not an insulated door spectacular guys it's tall tall buildings are pretty pretty good you're gonna see the inside but coming out let's check out the, the back or the side so one of the challenges here that we went through was that our client did his own concrete he did say if he would have known before he he would have gone with us but essentially who built their brand new home built their concrete slab now the slab is really I can't remember the length of up to here but his building, he really only needed 50 long, but uh, the slab was made to this length over here. The problem with this is that right here on this part of the slab is flat. So any water that's falling right here, it's just not going anywhere. So, and you can see how it just kind of puddles. So our client was, well, we warned our client, you're gonna have water coming in through the front right here to your building. So. What we did for him uh, to solve the situation is we installed this weather strip on the bottom. Although the door, when you put it flush, this helps to prevent water from coming in, but it's still not good enough. And this combined with that will definitely solve the problem. And we just actually installed it a bit ago. Now, if you want to really learn more in detail of what happened here and how we solved this, check out their next video specifically on this. I'm gonna talk about also what we did on, on the bottom of our base rail to prevent water from coming in under the building. That's something to always keep in mind that concrete has to be done to accommodate your building. And that is something that a lot of times 
it's not done. Especially with tubular buildings, there's not a lot of builders that do the concrete like us. We do the concrete and the buildings. So, so we know specifically how to build that concrete to fit the metal building, just like I got the right size shoe for my feet. So there's another detail that we are doing now. So we got a base trim on the bottom. So essentially, in case of any critters trying to come in through the ribs, this base trim prevents that from happening and it also redirects water away. So especially here where, where the concrete is higher, you know, it's already directing water away. So there no critters can uh, come inside the building. Now that is not standard. Actually, most tubular builders will not, don't really offer it. So if you see it in our quotas, we do it standard. If you don't want it, you can remove it, but I highly don't recommend it. Whew, it's a lot pressure in here. It's like 100 degrees outside right now in Texas. Uh, I wanna give a shout out to our team because they're out in the hot. If you see some delays in our, in our scheduling, in the time schedule, it's because of that. It's just really hot. There's, you gotta take a little bit more of your time. So check out this lean-to. This is actually super popular in Texas. You get a lean-to on your metal building. Um, this is kind of like a porch or, uh, where you can sit and relax. Our clients still working on their backyard. They, they have a brand new home. Now one of the things that, that always happens with tubular buildings and especially for lean-tos, a lot of um, clients through my experience don't really like the base rail that runs here and then you got uh, studs every five feet. So you could technically like trip over it. Not a lot of people are much fans of it. Well, this is an alternate solution to solving that problem. So essentially we, you know, we welded an angle and then we bolted it to it and we created headers on the top to support the lean to up top. So now this is super sturdy and it will not fly away. Now, the, here's another thing, come here. So this is a tube. So essentially the tube has like a space in between. And so like critters tend to nest there and these caps, you can get these caps as well. We put them on for our client. We call them end caps and basically seals. So no critters are living under the tubes that are exposed. Look at this, uh, there's a roll-up door on the side and then we got a steel door. So this is our heavy duty steel door. This is the 48 inch, so it's about four feet. If I'm not mistaken, seven feet tall, um, 84 inches. But this is our steel door, uh, heavy duty. It's flush to the concrete, super solid. Again, we did not paint this door. The overhead doors, the walk-in door, the roll-up door, and the back overhead door was painted by our client. They really wanted to make sure it matched their overhead doors for their home. So they you know, were able to paint their own doors. Come on in, show them the beautiful inside of this. Spectacular, right? So I am in love with this building. This is 16 foot tall to the eaves. We now, for 16 foot tall and greater, well, it depends the area where you're located. We got in Texas different wind ratings from 90 to even uh, 170 if you're in the Gulf Coast, or Mexico Gulf Coast, like Houston, Corpus Christi. But we're here in Midlothian, Texas, and right now we're doing for 16 foot talls this type of leg, uh, spacer, leg uh, is super solid. The more that we come in, we basically creating right here about seven and a half inch column and really giving it this rigid strength from wind pressure, from lateral pressure. So it's, this building is super, super solid. Now, remember I mentioned about vertical? One of the reasons why vertical is a lot more pricier than horizontal is that we need these girts to be able to bolt the panels, because each panel is about three foot wide. Um, and you can see it's like about right here from there. So we need something to bolt, and that's why we run girts. But not only that, these girts are supporting these two legs from caving in or from, from moving in. So it gives it a lot more rigid strength 
as well as uh, here you can run your, your conduits for your electrical. Instead of running your electrical onto the panel, you can run it onto your frame material and you don't have to be buying extra wood and then doing that labor to, to be able to bolt your, your conduits. I have seen a lot of people do their conduits through the panel. Most paid places, you're, it wouldn't pass code in the sense that it's touching the exterior material or the exterior, yeah, material. So what happens when you're putting a door on the side? Here's another thing, just throwing out a lot of information. But what happens when you have a door on the side is we got some trusses that are coming down. We have to remove them and therefore we create a header bar that supports the columns or studs that are down here. And so for this type of trusser, we also create a ladder, basically tube or square uh, box. I'm sorry, that's what we call it. It's a box to support the uh, trusses up top and be able to create an opening. And that's what we did for this roll-up door. By the way, this is a small six by six roll-up door. Now look at, look at this uh, overhead door. So client has two 12 by 14 overhead doors. And I'm not exactly sure, but I think this one's a 12 by 12 overhead door that he has back there. One of the things that is probably a negative in the overhead door is how it takes away from your overhead clearance, but there are different tracks. So you can get like a high lift track or a roof, follow the, follow the roof line tracks. And those really, really extend up to the roof line and be able to give you a lot more clearance especially if you had like an overhead door here, that overhead door would be coming up here. Probably don't want that. Probably want to follow the roof line that would just follow up the columns. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I gave you a lot of knowledge because this, this building specifically has a lot of things, a lot of custom features, but it's very aesthetically pleasing. And uh, don't forget to stay tuned because I'm about to show you guys another similar identical building is for his son that was, we built uh, pretty close by here. And it has cedar pose, it has uh, wainscoting. There's a lot of other cool features about this project. So you don't want to miss out on that one. And uh, we're off and see you guys in the next video.